Hey, what is up guys? It's JBob here, back again with another Minecraft video. And today I have a super sweet tutorial for you guys, showing you guys how to build an infinite villager breeder, which you can use to get infinite number of villagers that you can use to trade with and get all sorts of awesome goodies. Now this design for an infinite villager breeder is actually by another YouTuber uh, who goes by Grimbomb is his name. And I will link his video um, of him kind of talking about villager mechanics and kind of how he came up with this, this design. And this video I'm making here is just kind of a simplified, just a tutorial on how exactly to build this villager breeder. Let's go ahead and get into it. Guys, the first thing you want to do is find a space where you want to build your infinite villager breeder. Now keep in mind that villagers want to be a part of a village and you need a to create a village with some doors for this infinite villager breeder to work. So you wanna find a location that's going to be far enough away from where all of your other builds are, where you're not gonna have any doors because any doors that the villagers will be able to detect that are not a part of this design will actually cause the center of the village to change and could cause your villager breeder to stop working. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to find your location for this thing. But to go ahead and get started, all you're actually going to need door-wise is four doors. And you're going to go ahead, I'm just going to place a block down here so it's a little bit easier to place the doors. You're just going to go in a little circle around yourself like so, and then you can go ahead and bring this up a little bit and I think yeah we're gonna go right there and then we'll go ahead and add our, our dirt layer in here. Now if you're doing this on survival obviously you're gonna have your grounds level probably about here so all you're going to have to dig, do is dig down one two three four and five place your doors and then you should be good to go and you can even add in some extra like ladders so say if I came up like this you could add some ladders going up here so that way you can uh, access these doors um, in the future. Say if you want to stop the villager breeder, all you'd have to do is come down here, break these doors and the village will be destroyed and the villagers will stop breeding. But once you do have this, I like to just create a little tunnel here since I'm in creative that will kind of make this little tunnel up here to where your farm level is going to be. And now I like to add a little trap door here, which will still allow light to shine through down on these doors, which is very important. You are going to need a light source um, able to come down to these doors like skylight so that this will be able to become a village. So just keep that in mind as well. I just like to use trap doors because the villagers can't actually open these and like fall down in here. So it just kind of keeps them from falling down in this little area here. But then once you have that, you just want to extend out your farmland a little bit. So I went ahead and did this, and I just went ahead and extended this off four blocks on each side from the center, creating a nine by nine square of farmland around the outside. And obviously, if this is going to be our farmland, we're going to need some water sources. So what I like to do is I just come under here, place in probably just one of these water source is on each of the the corners and then that should actually hydrate all of our our land here so if we just go ahead and break these now and get our water sources in we can then go ahead and till all of this and make sure that it is all hydrated and we can plant crops on all of these blocks here so as you can see, most of our farmland here is starting to turn into this darker soil here, which means it is being hydrated, and soon enough all of this will become that dark color. But now what we want to do is go ahead and create a border going around the outside here, and then this is where we're going to build our walls going upwards that will um, keep our villagers from leaving this area and uh, keeping them kind of enclosed so that they will continue to breed. Now that we have that, I'm just going to go ahead and add a too high wall going around here of glass so that way we can kind of see in, especially if this is kind of ground level here. And then, yeah, I'll just kind of go around like that. Now, if you guys are building this on survival and you won't want to take your villagers out of here once you have a few of them in here that you want to kind of maybe sort out into a trading hall, all you have to do is kind of come over here to one of the walls, break a hole that you could have um, villagers that can come out this way. Um, and all you have to do is place like a trap door or a fence gate. Make sure you don't use a door because that could mess up with our, our center of our village here. 
Yeah, but you can just use a trapdoor or fence gate and then open it to uh, come in here and maybe push out some of the villagers that you would like to add to your trading hall or put them wherever where you'd like to trade with them. All right, now let's go ahead and plant all of our crops. There are three different crops which I would recommend that you use for this farm, um, but I would keep all of the whatever crops consistent um, across the entire farm. Like I'm going to use all carrots here, but you can also use potatoes and or wheat. I wouldn't recommend using beetroots because it takes a lot longer for the villagers to get to their full um, food count before they'll start to breed because the beetroots equate to a lower food count than the carrots, potatoes, and wheat do. But yeah, so I would say using carrots, potatoes, or wheat, but then keep it consistent across your entire farm. Now that we have this all done, I'm just going to go ahead and place trap doors here in each of these water holes here and that will stop our villagers from falling down in there and all kind of staying at this level because it is very important that our villagers all stay at this exact block height or higher because if they come down to this level here and start to detect these doors then it will start to create um, issues because there's only four doors here and for this to become an infinite villager breeder the villagers all need to stay at this exact block height in order for the the farm to work and if they go any below her, they will start to take up the villager mob cap. And yeah, it just won't work. So make sure you have um, all your villagers stay above this. So if you are going to put them in a trading hall or anything like that, make sure it is at this level or higher than this level. I now have spawned in a few villagers here. And you really only need two villagers to get this breeder up and running. But um, if you are playing this in survival, to get your villagers in here, um, first off, you're going to need to find a village, and you can kind of use a minecart track to kind of push them into here, or maybe you can just kind of nudge them across wherever they are coming from into here. But yeah, just maybe like adding some stairs or something away up into here, other than just straight blocks, is a little bit easier. But yeah, hopefully you can get them in here all okay usually just takes a little bit of time but then to kind of get this farm up and running as you can see we don't have a farmer here we have like a few blacksmiths and then what is this a live oh there's another villager <laughs> but uh is this guy he is a librarian respiration one okay cool but as you can see we really don't have any farmers here so we're going to need to kind of feed these guys crops until they start breeding and then hopefully we can get a farmer who can go through and start harvesting all these crops for us and that's what kind of makes the uh, system kind of automatic so I'm just gonna go ahead and give these guys a bunch of crops and then we can wait around and see if they start breeding so as you can see here guys I've just started throwing down a bunch of crops here in the village and we already have one villager here who is starting to want to breed and as these guys all start to get enough crops that uh, their food count gets high enough then um, these guys will start wanting to breed and that will what basically will start the infinite breeding process and then again once you get your first farmer in here uh, they will start going around and harvesting all these crops and you won't have to feed these guys any more food and they will just kind of do this process all on their own but I'm gonna keep giving these guys some crops until we can see if we can get ourselves a little baby villager running around here all right guys I think our first baby villager was born as you can see our librarian guy here is trying to share some crops what are you doing standing on the baby so yeah this is basically how the villager breeder works uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just hang out here little AFK for a little bit and wait till this uh, villager breeder starts really kicking into action because once you have a bunch of villagers in here the rates kind of increase exponentially um, as more villagers get in here they will start to breed they have more breeding options and the only thing that will really limit them is the amount of crops they have to kind of share around so the bigger your crop farm is the kind of more crops that can be shared around as you can see the villager breeder is doing pretty well I went AFK for probably about an hour or so and as you can see the farmers are kind of going around and harvesting all of the crops and then kind of sharing them around uh, I want to see if we can catch any of these guys still breeding. Yep, there we go. So these guys are still breeding. It is an infinite villager breeder. And yeah, it's working quite well. And kind of once all these crops start to get to their 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 max growth, I guess, um, then a farmer will come around and harvest them all up. And yeah, that's basically how to build an infinite villager breeder. It's really simple. 
Um, I believe this only works on PC with this four door infinite villager breeder design um, that Grimbomb came up here with. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it only works on PC, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's not going to work for Bedrock or Console Edition or anything like that. But yeah, it's a great villager breeder and it works really well. And it's actually one that I have created on my survival world. And I actually do a series here on my channel of a um, of me playing survival. And this is one of the things that I built. And I'm working on a really awesome uh, trading hall. So if you want to see that, check out my um my survival series on the channel and yeah i'll i'll have a, i'll have that linked down in the description as well if you guys want to check that out but this has been your boy j bob i hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and it comes into good use on your minecraft worlds and i'll see you guys in the next one j bob out <laughs>